a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time and to give praise unto his holy and divine name. He woke us up this morning in our right minds, and we are so thankful for that. And we go before his throne of grace, uh, recognizing that he is our helper and that he leads and guides us through his Holy Spirit. And so, Father God, in the name of King Jesus the Christ, we come humbly before your throne of grace, just thanking you for who you are, dear Heavenly Father, knowing that you have many names and you fulfill each name perfectly. And we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your sovereignty. And dear Heavenly Father, we come now asking that you would forgive us of all our sins, and we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you would uh, bless us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Please open our spiritual hearts, minds, and souls to receive that which you have uh, prepared for us. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you, dear Heavenly Father, will put me on the decrease and you be on the increase through your holy and divine word that will be spoken here this morning. In the name of King Jesus Christ, we thank thee and we thank you for the, the pastorialship of this uh, anointed ground church. We thank you for the members, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for how you have blessed anointed ground church. And these blessings we ask in your precious son, King Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Let us all say amen. Let us all say amen again. Amen, amen. Uh, this morning, our lesson is entitled, and let me just say the name is a Hebrew name, and uh, it is pronounced in Hebrew, Ahard, Ahard, Hebrew, Ahard, rather than in English, the way it appears to be. And so, uh, the title of our lesson is Ahard Frees Israel. Ahard Frees Israel. And we know that he is a uh, judge. This lesson is coming from the book of Judges. So uh, the lesson text is uh, Judges, coming from Judges, the third chapter, verses 15 through 25, and verses 29 through 30. A related scripture is coming from Exodus, the second chapter, verses 23 through 25, uh, the third chapter, verses 7 through 9, and the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 15. And also, our lesson is uh, reflected from De Deuteronomy, the 25th chapter, verses 17 through 19. Uh, the uh, golden text, it says to us, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up, a deliverer, a herd, the son of Jerah, a Benjamite, Judges, the third chapter, verses 15. And we will read the scripture lesson text uh, responsibly. And the lesson text began like as, as, as it is written. Judges, the third chapter, verse 15 says, but when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer. Ahard, the son of Jared, a Benjamite, a man left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. And, 
And Ahard came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had for himself alone. And Ahard said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. And the halt also went in, in after the blade, and the fat closed upon the blade, so that he could not draw this dagger out of his belly, and the dirt came out. When he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked. They said, surely he covereth his feet in his summer chamber. And they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty, and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. To all together, some Moab was subdued. Amen, amen. Okay, our lesson today's aim, uh, this is, our lesson today's aim is, uh, the, the fact is, to show how uh, Ahar delivered the people of Israel from the Mo Moabites using the strength of God gave him. Principle, the principle, to show that God cares for his people and delivers them through leaders who act in his strength. The application, to establish that God provides the leaders we need as well as the strength those leaders need to help us. And so the introduction of the lesson, life has its ups and downs. For some people, it is mostly down and it stays there for a long time. But what we see in scripture is a God who loves his people. When we need help, God is always there to provide what we need. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Okay, so uh, my first question was, to myself, uh, what are the duties of a judge? What is the duties, the purpose of a judge? And uh, in my discovery, I found that a biblical judge was a ruler, a military leader, and someone who presided over legal hearings. The time period of the judges followed the conquest of Canaan by Joshua until the formation of the first kingdom of Israel, uh, 1150 through 1025 BC. During this time, the Israelite tribe formed a loose confederation. The judges during biblical times settled disputes among the people. They acted as religious leaders and led the Israelites in worship also. Some of the judges acted as God's prophets 
and anointed the first two kings of Israel. And those first two kings were Saul, King Saul, and King David. King David. Amen. And so, uh, let's see, the, the theme is, uh, and this is what I have prepared here, the theme is the theme played out in Judges. The people are unfaithful to Yahweh, and we know Yahweh is another name for our, our Lord and Savior. Am I right about it? And so, uh, he therefore delivers them into the hands of their enemies because of their disobedience. Amen. And the people then repent and entreat Yahweh for mercy, which he sends in form of a judge. The judge delivers the Israelites from oppression, but after a while, they fall into unfaithfulness and the cycle is repeated. So we know that the, the Israelites, they would uh, become unfaithful to our Lord and Savior and uh, they would repent, ask for mercy from our Lord and Savior. Then they, they, they would repent and then they would turn from that unfaithfulness. And then uh, once the Lord delivers them, then they find themselves back at the mercy seat of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, I can compare uh, that to today's uh, uh, circumstances with God's people. Uh, we, we, we ask for mercy, uh, we, 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 we sin, we, we become unfaithful to the Lord in some form or another, and then we ask for mercy, then we have to repent of that sin Turn away from it. That's what true repentance is, is to turn away from that sin. And then we're to continue to seek God and his will for our uh, spiritual walk with him. Am I right about it? Okay, amen. So uh, developing the lesson. Ahard, a new deliverer for Israel, Judges the third chapter, verses 15 through 18. After living in... Sub Sub, um, subservience of Egnon, the, pig, the pagan king of Moab. For 18 long years, the people of Israel were at their uh, breaking point. For 18 years, they were under the uh, uh, authority of King Eg Egna, Eglon and uh, of, of the nation of Moab. Now, I, I find that uh, the Moabite people was somewhat uh, uh, closely uh, and, and uh, closely geologically closely to uh, the land of, of uh, where the Israelites were living. Amen. And so uh, they had their disagreements or whatever uh, as, as a people. And of course, uh, by uh, the children of Israel, the Israelites, becoming disobedient to, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, God uh, put them under the authority of their enemy. <laughs> and the Lord will do that, amen, uh, to punish you, to punish you. And so... Uh, Moab location was just short of the promised land, uh, Canaan. Uh, the Moabite the people was often in conflict with the Israelite neighbors to uh, the west, uh, geologically speaking. Uh, Swift, and, and, and another outline here of this lesson, uh, is entitled Swift Victory Through God's Strength, Judges the third chapter, verses 19 through 25. And it says, if the encounter between Ahart and Eglon almost seemed like a setup, that is exactly what it was. When God gets involved, 
the enemy will be defeated. You all, you all understand that? You know, no matter what you're going through in this life that we're living, uh, uh, when you depend on God to get you through whatever it is that he allows to come upon you, then the enemy, uh, he's going to be defeated. He's going to be defeated. And so that's why we're to put our trust in him. We're to put our trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he has all power. He has all power. He has all authority over mankind, period. Amen? And so we're not to put our trust in man, but we're to put our trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and, and that's what he, 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 he is, it, it demands us to do, is to trust him. And so uh, we have to be obedient. And it goes on to say, his God, talking about God's methods, are sometimes very uh, conventional, unconventional, unconventional. You know, when we expect God to move in one way, he has another way. Am I right about it? Because his ways and thoughts are higher than ours. His ways and thoughts. He, we, he is the manufacturer of us. Amen? And, he, and so, therefore, we, we, we are the product. <laughs> we are his product. Amen? So we have to depend on the manufacturer. You know, uh, it's like the scripture says about, uh, you know, God is the potter, the potter, and we are the clay. We are the clay. And so, therefore, we have to depend on our, our Lord and Savior. It goes on to say it, it is important to help the students understand that God uh, acts divisively on uh, behalf of the oppressed people and against those who torment them. And now, we find also that, you know, we as a people has been oppressed for many years. Am I right about it? I mean, it's, it's nothing to be quiet about, keep quiet about it, and that's not the thing to be mentioning today. But, you know, it, it still goes on today, as a matter of fact. I mean, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Amen? And so that's why we have to depend on the Lord. Now, he has brought our people from a mighty long way, you know, from the way it used to be, you know, years ago. And so it's, it's sad that our younger generation don't realize that there is a lot of uh, uh, lives that uh, was given for us to have the privileges that we have today. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, God does not, he's not pleased with uh, oppression. You know, a man uh, uh, having control over man. No, no, only he has that authority to do that. You know, we have to have authority over the earth. <laughs> All the Think the birds of the air and all those things, fishes of the seas and all that he's given us dominion over. Am I right about it? And so that's what we're to have. And mankind is to have authority over. And so uh, it also, uh, continuing on, there is another outline. Uh, number three, it says, lasting peace through God's strength. Uh, Judges, the third chapter, verses 29 through 30. And it says, the deliverer, Ahard then called Israel's army together and attacked the Moabites. 10,000 of the strongest Moabites uh, soldiers were killed at one time. Now, this is the work of the Lord. This is the work of the Lord. I mean, uh, he, he is all powerful. He's all powerful. So that's why we have to depend on him. And it says the people of Israel now had peace, you know, because they're dependent on God to uh, get them through uh, their opposition that they're experiencing. And so the, the scriptures passages also tells us that this time uh, of peace lasted for 80 years. So God will give you relief for a while. Am I right about it? And then sometime when we receive that relief, then we get all comfortable and everything. And then here we go again. We're uh, becoming unfailing to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I right? And so, therefore, we got to ask God for mercy again. We got to go before His throne of grace and ask Him for forgiveness of how we offended Him. 
And so therefore, uh, once he does that, then he will relieve you of, um, of the opposition. He will relieve you of it. And so therefore, for 80 years he did this. And it also says, note that the Israelites' time of bondage under Moabite's dominion uh, was 18 years, verse 4. When the deliverer came from God, their peace from God through the deliverer lasted 80 long years. When, he, when, we, faces, when we face crisis in our own lives, God may raise up special people to help us. And this is how he does. He, he uses people. You know, yeah, he shows up, but he shows up in, in the spirit of people. That's, that's what, we are all spiritual beings. We are all spiritual beings. So he shows up, you know, with his almighty power. And it can be, he can use anybody. He can use a, 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 the sinner man to do his will. Uh, a wayward man. It, it, you know, uh, God has no limitations of what he can do. He has no limitations. And so it says, they are his agents. They talk about the people that he sends. They are, they are his agents of uh, deliverance for our particular need at that time, just as Ahard was for Israel during the Mo Moabite oppression. And so therefore, there is nothing that man can do to you that God cannot give you relief Amen. through and for. Amen? Amen. And so uh, uh, God had chosen uh, Ahard, which was a judge, to go and take the life of the king that was holding his people, God's people, under uh, oppression. Am I right? In slavery, in other words. And so therefore, uh, uh, God does not send anybody that he's going to use unprepared. He, he does not do that. I mean, God is a God of order. He's a God of order. He does things decent and in order. And so therefore, that's why we need to depend on him. And uh, God's provision, God's provision. Judges, the third chapter, verses 15 through 19. A deliverer, and it's talking about Ahard. Uh, uh, after 40 years of peace, uh, Israel turned again to sinful living, and God gave them over to Eglon, the king of Moab, uh, verse 11 through 12. Uh, the, the king allied himself with the nation of Ammon and Amalek, uh, conquered Israel, and took possession of Jericho, the city of palm trees, verse seven, uh, 13. There he could have a stronghold for 18 years, probably very long years, to the Israelites, and, I, and I, even a year is a, is a long time. Am I right about it? But 18 years, 18 years. Uh, and so that's, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was hard labor too when it came to uh, the oppression of uh, the Moabites, amen? And so the Moabites retained uh, dominance over Israel. Uh, finally, out of uh, Desperation, the children of Israel cried out to God for help. Now they, they, you know, it reminds me of David. When David, King David sinned, he, he realized he had sinned, and he would hasten to the throne of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I right? And petition that which concerns him. And that's, that's, all these are examples for us to follow, as a matter of fact. All this, the scriptures, uh, 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 is a uh, 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 blueprint. The scriptures is a blueprint for us to be able to follow for our life, our individual lives. Am I right about it? And for our family lives. Amen? And so therefore, uh, the word of God is the bread of life. The word of God is the bread of life. 
And we have to feed the spirit man. That's what we have to do, feed the spirit man. And, 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 and as we feed the spirit man by reading his word every day and receiving understanding, because we have to understand what the scriptures is telling us in order to be able to act upon it. Am I right about it? So as you feed the spirit man, then the spirit man develops more and more. It's a process. It's a process. Just like uh, when it comes to the physical food that we feed our physical bodies with, our physical bodies uh, grow, am I right about it, and develop. We're not to remain babes in Christ, am I right about it? We're not to remain babes, but we are to grow and become more mature each and every day of our journey in following after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so it, uh, it goes on to say, finally, out of desperation, the children of Israel cried out to God for help. God deliberately raised up just the right person to lead Israel out from under the domination of the Moabites. His name was Ahard, and I can't emphasize that enough. That is the Hebrew name, which... Uh, uh, I'm pronouncing in Hebrew, Ahard, amen, not in English, amen. And it says the son of Jerah, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, which was located just north of Judah. He was left-handed, and important detail in the development of uh, this uh, deliverance, Ahard was also respected as a leader of the tribe. It was his task to deliver the annual uh, tribute that Eglon had proposed, had imposed on Israel. In order to uh, appease uh, one important in this subdued nation delivered, this uh, tribute, this made the, ki the kind of the, the king feel more important. His, et, his ego was stroked when an official of the other nation had to be so humble. And so therefore, when you are under captivity, you are to be humble toward your captors, am I right about it? You're to, you're to yield to uh, uh, and be obedient to those that have rule over you. And so even uh, the word of God teaches us, you know, even whether we are on a job or whatever, you know, we are to be uh, obedient to them, uh, th those that are, have uh, authority over you, as unto God. We're to, that's what we're to do. Even though you un, uh, uh, the children of Israel was under captivity, amen. And uh, it goes on to talk about the dagger that uh, uh, Judge uh, Ahard uh, had to prepare, you know, to use to be able to take the life of the king, King Eglon, amen. And it says uh, in Judges the third chapter, verses sixteen through seventeen, the tribe of Benjamin was known for having left-handed people, left-handed people. And we find that that's kind of rare even today, left-handed people. Most people are right-handed, am I right about it? But it was an advantage for what God wanted done, amen. And we find that out later on. It says, uh, uh, of which uh, Eckhart was one uh, in David's day, are, all, are told, these are they that came to David to Ziglag, while he yet kept himself close be because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty man, helpers of the war. They could use both the right hand and the left in hurdling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow. Even of Saul's brothering of uh, Benjamin, 
uh, and that's First Chronicles, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through t 2. And it goes on to say, Ahard immediately began to prepare by making a special dagger. It was double-edged and about 18 inches long. Uh, that's one cubit. It was short enough, therefore, to be hidden under his clothing. And so we find later on in the scriptures that uh, uh, Eg Eglon, even though he was left-handed, he strapped the dagger under his right leg, on his right leg. And that would be unsuspected of the person that would be uh, the enemy. Uh, it, it's like an element of surprise, amen? Because being left-handed, you know, to be right-handed, you, you're really getting ready to show the enemy what you're getting ready to do. But to reach down uh, with, you know, with your left hand and, and pull that dagger out, it, it would truly surprise uh, the person that it was to receive uh, that weapon, you, you see. And so uh, definitely uh, God had uh, 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 the element of surprise uh, done through uh, Ahard. And so uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Israel's victory. Judges, the third chapter, verses 29 through 30. The delay of Eglon's uh, servants, and this is once uh, they found out that uh, their king had been killed, okay, by Ahart. It says, the delay of e Eglon's servants allowed uh, Ahart to escape. He passed uh, the place where he had turned back and went on to uh, Sirith. Uh, this place was not, this place has not been identified, but it was located somewhere in Ephraim. From uh, there, he blew a trumpet and uh, rallied troops to join him. Uh, he, he then challenged them to follow him, for the Lord was going to defeat the Moabites and free his people from them. This was a strong statement of faith on, the, on his part. But, say but, <laughs> but he could make it because it was confident, because he was confident uh, he was fulfill, fulfilling God's plan. And, you know, when we're uh, obedient to what God uh, demands us to do, we can be confident that everything is going to work out for the good. Am I right about it? Because God is in control. And it says the, the people of Israel sensed his confidence and uh, responded to his challenge immediately. They gathered behind Ahard leadership, seized the, the, lords, the lords of the Jordan River that led back to Moab and stopped the Moabites from returning home. Under Ahard's leadership, the Israelites killed 10,000 Moabites, all of them were described as being among the strongest and most elite of Moab's forces. And that just shows you right there that no matter how uh, 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 built you are, strong, uh, how muscular you may be or whatever, uh, that's all physical. Am I right about it? But when it comes to the spiritual, physical, physical, Physicality is only temporary, physicality, but uh, that which is spiritual is everlasting. Am I right about it? <laughs> and it has all power. It has all power. And so, therefore, uh, 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 Ahard and, and, and the, the people that followed him, 
w was able to uh, uh, be victorious over uh, the Moabites. They were all men of valor. Now, uh, valor means uh, they were healthy and, and stro strong. I'm sorry. Valor means that they were great, great. There were great courage in the face of danger, especially in battle. And so uh, there are military uh, personnel that is honored for uh, valor. There is a medal that they receive also for that. And so uh, when it comes to uh, men of lusty, lusty, it says that that's healthy and strong, full of vigor, full of vigor. And so therefore, uh, uh, Ahard and uh, the people that uh, was with him, they were able to accomplish uh, in the, the lives of 10,000 people. And, and you know what? When it comes to God defeating any nation, and, and he's going to do that, uh, it's, it's, it's in the making right now. <laughs> We're living in the last times, the last days of the existence of this cruel world, this wicked world that we're living in. And so, therefore, he's going to let every nation that is against him know who he is. He, he's going to let them know. And so, therefore, uh, that's why it's so important for us to be able to tell the, tell the story about our Lord and Savior and his second coming. And they need to be prepared for this. They need to change their way of living uh, while they yet have an opportunity to do so because when Christ comes, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. And so, therefore, we need to be prepared to meet uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? And so, therefore, uh, uh, God can use anybody. He used Ahard. And he can use us, but it's, it's not about our abilities, but it's about our availabilities, being available for him to use. But we have to be seeking him in order to be truly available. Am I right about it? He, he's not just going to just uh, use you because you say you're available, but you're not proving it by the life that you're living. Am I right about it? You have to prove it by the life you're living because what you do speaks so loud that what you say you can't even be heard. Actions speak louder than words. Amen? And so uh, the uh, uh, practical points is, uh, number one, in his mercy, God answered the cries of his children at just the right time. And that's what he does. You know, he's always right on time. We expect for him to show up when, to our understanding, but no, he sees the whole picture. God sees the whole picture. He knows the, the, the end from the beginning, amen? And so therefore, that's why we have to depend on him. He's gonna show up uh, of his own will. When he, when he knows the best time to show up, not when we think he should show up. Am I right about it? And so, therefore, uh, we need to depend on him. And the second point is God's empowerment does not pre preclude our proper preparation. Okay, we can prepare just like I attempted to prepare for this lesson today. But uh, definitely uh, he can give you uh, 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 his words to speak, and you're not even aware that he, you, you have spoken them until uh, you have finished a lot of times. Am I right about it? So, so we are to be vessels. We're to be vessels for our Lord and Savior, so to use by him. And so, therefore, uh, sometimes we prepare, but it don't always work out the way we prepare. Am I right about it? Because he's in control. When you invite the Holy Spirit to come, then the Holy Spirit is going to operate differently from the way we operate. Amen. And the third point is, it is not wise to let curiosity override sound judgment. Curiosity. You know, we are all guilty of uh, being curious of something. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, but when it comes to sound judgment, 
then definitely we need to yield to sound judgment rather than what we are curious about. And because because we're not going to understand it the way it truly is. Amen. And uh, it says also that uh, in verse uh, the, the fourth point is God's message to man is not always a positive one. It's not always a positive one. God's message to man is not always a positive one. And so therefore, uh, we still need to depend on him. The fifth uh, point, the wise person plans ahead. And that's what we're to do. We're to plan ahead. We're, we're to live for tomorrow. We're not to be living for the day. And that's the way it is with most people. They're living for the now. And then, we, you know, when you live for the now, then you're in trouble because uh, you're not prepared for the future. Am I right about it? And so, therefore, it's just like uh, 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 the, 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 uh, the, the sisters that had the, the lanterns. You remember that? They were waiting on Jesus. They were waiting on him and, to come. And, of course, they're oil lamps. Uh, there was a few of them didn't have enough oil. And they, they had to go and try to get some more oil. But while, while they uh, left, that's when Jesus showed up. You see what I'm saying? And so therefore, you need to always be prepared. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, uh, we're to plan for the future. But we know who holds the future. We know who holds the future. That's why we need to depend on our Lord and Savior, because he's in control of the future. Uh, the sixth point is God rules over the choices of even unrighteous people. He rules over the choices even of unrighteous people, those that are not following after him. Amen. But we uh, are following after him, so therefore we need to definitely uh, adhere to his uh, directions. Amen. And so the, the, the last and final point, a practical point of this lesson is, with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing, nothing is impossible. It may seem impossible to us, but look here. God is almighty. He has almighty power. And so that's why we need to depend on him. No matter what circumstances you may be going through right now, it could be sickness, it could be financial, it could be uh, other areas of your life. You need to depend on him because he's the one that's in control. It's, so he says to seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near and so therefore that's what we are to do and so therefore i'm going to end it right here uh this lesson uh for today a heart frees israel and then you know by you making yourself available unto our lord and savior jesus christ you can help free somebody from living a life of sin through the life that you live and and, and, and it's not by what you say to them all the time but it's you being an example for them to follow through the, uh, the power of uh, the Holy Spirit.